listeners, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Archives of Mainframe, a Reboot Review Podcast. To start off, we have a very exciting announcement to make. Our uh, podcast is actually joined up with 3gem.ca, where you can get all of your gaming, television show, and movie reviews. We will be hosted on the website, and many all of our episodes will be hosted there. Now... I am your host, Ian Keneally, and joining me today is Hilary Stahlbaum. Hey, Hilary. Hey. And Alexander Cote. Hey, Alex. Yep. So, today we will be looking at three episodes of Reboot Season 1, those being The Tearing, which is Episode 1, Episode 2, Racing the Clock, and Episode 3, The Quick and the Fed. So, without further ado, let's reboot and get into some episodes. There he is! Yes, what? there we go. I, we'll I said there he is. No, 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 no. Look out! 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 Look Enveloped. He's, he's, he's confined. confined. He's, he's trapped. He's trapped. He's trapped. He's yeah. He's trapped. I don't think so. I hate when I this happens. It's like a no, reckoning. It's, like, it's your yeah, fault, what, and what, I hate my it. My arm. Where's my arm? And we're back. So what we're going to start off with is a uh, very short uh, plot synopsis from my handy-dandy Reboot the Definitive Mainframe Edition uh, episode guide. Episode 1, The Tearing. Megabyte threatens to harm Guardian Bob's new friends, Dot and Enzo, when Bob refuses to do him a mysterious favor. Hmm, I wonder what might have happened in this episode. So, uh, what we're going to be starting with is a discussion of the uh, of the episode with the notes that we've each taken after we've watched each episode separately. And so we're going to be turning the floor over to Hillary. Hillary, why don't you start going over some of your notes? Okay, so in this episode, well, it's our very first episode, so we get our first look at Mainframe. Mm-hmm. Um, we meet Bob, we meet Hack and Slash, Megabyte, Frisket, Enzo, Dot, Fong and Cecil or Cecil. <laughs> um, we get to see our first GameCube, mm-hmm. uh, but they don't get to go in the first one. The, so the user wins, and the whole sector gets nullified. So we learn a bit about you know things getting nullified, but we haven't we don't see the nulls yet. Mm-hmm. Um, we learn that Megabyte has sort of a Nazi army. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, we get to see Bob use Glitch for the first time. Uh, we learn a bit about tears and the supercomputer. Mm-hmm. And then there's a second GameCube, and Bob and Dot enter. So we get to see our first game and our first reboot. We learn that every time they go into a game, they have to reboot so they match the game. And it's some sort of space game. Yeah, so, yeah. I didn't know about that for later. So this this episode is just basically an introduction to the main characters and our setting and games. Well, yeah, just like you know any uh, any pilot episode would be and such. Uh huh. Um, and we have a, a quote in this episode that I think is pretty famous. Bob says, "Stay frosty." <laughs> yeah, I, I've got something on that later as well. Uh, where's my phone? Here we go. Um, yeah. So, uh, what else you got, Hillary? Well, actually, I want to hear what you guys think about the episode, the space game. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, Alex, why don't you go next, then? Okay, well, um, that well, might as well talk about it. I mean, we saw the first GameCube show up, and then they didn't go get to go inside. And I kind of, like, wonder why or what that first game would be, because we don't know what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. You, You'd wonder why he lost and what the game was inside. So, this yeah. kind of thing here. I mean, will we see more like that? Or are we going to see all the game cubes or not? You know, we'll discover during the seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, something I really like 
um, or rather found funny there. Uh, if you notice, um, the, 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 there's quite a bit of quirkiness between Bob and um, Megabyte. Uh, he tease him and like try to uh, always have like the upper end and when to talk between each other. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, that, that's definitely true and all that. Uh, do you have anything else? Um, no, I mean, she Hillary touched a lot of things already, so no. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I guess I'll go over my notes and all that. So uh, my first one is the awesome opening. Seriously, they don't make uh, the openings uh, anywhere like they used to and all that, you know? Like, it just it, for me, it's the music, right? And such. Um, one of the things actually I found hilarious about the episode was, uh, well, Hack and Slash. They're the uh, the the comedic hair, uh, you know, the uh, comedy relief. That's the term I'm looking for for the episode or for the series. And uh, you know, their their shtick is they always get uh, like smashed together or something like that, right? And I, I, I found it quite hilarious that their first split of the whole series happens within 30 seconds of the uh, of the first episode starting. So I always found that kind of funny. Um, one thing I noticed was uh, Dot's car, right? It's the first time you see it, and what I and I'm trying. To, I've been trying to figure this out, but. I'm pretty sure we don't see it again until the fourth season. When, I actually uh... don't. Hmm, sorry, sorry. Hillary. I actually don't even remember seeing a car or that she had a car. Uh, it was when the the first GameCube dropped, and oh, right. uh, Bob, you know, he uh, he got smacked into uh, Hack and Slash's. Uh, I think they call them APCs uh, in the show, and then uh, you know he starts falling down, and then Don ends over in the car, and he gets caught in in the car. Basically, as he falls and all that, uh, or else you know, Bob would have had his own nice little splat there. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I, I honestly don't think that we see it again until season four, and I think that's when um, uh, Hexadecimal, when she's in her like, uh, and, oh, and by the way, spoiler alert, but Hexadecimal is in her uh, the uh, driving the car in uh, that season and such. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, another thing I noticed was, you know how Fong's favorite game looks like ping or uh, Pong, mm-hmm. and all that. I'm wondering if that's uh, like how his uh, they came up with his name was uh, Fong and Pong. Get it? Well, we didn't see Pong in this episode, did we? Yeah, he did. Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, because um, Dot was like, "Why don't you like you know after Megabyte had destroyed the uh, the diner and such, you know, Dot's like." Uh, you should go see Fong and see what he has to say, something like that. And the thing with Fong, to get any advice out of him, you have to beat him at his favorite game. And so his favorite game is basically 3D Pong, mm-hmm. more or less. So, no. you know, I, I'm just wondering if that's how they came up with his, with his name, basically adding an, uh, an H into Pong, if that makes any sense and such. Um, yeah, I think they talked about it on one of the special features, but I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I think we'll make that into one of our special episodes as well. Okay. Once yeah. we get to the end of this and all that. Um, uh, another thing I noticed was uh, the first real game, so the space, uh, the space game. Uh, it, it's basically a, a mix of Asteroids, the classic, you know, video game. Uh, the Star Wars Trench Run, you know, when they're going down through... Uh, through the canyon or that under, underground cave, you know, the long one. And also uh, a little bit of Top Gun because of the carrier at the very beginning and such. Uh, and one thing I also noticed, does no one notice that they were actually breathing in space? <laughs> and all that. I always found that kind of funny. Uh, when uh, one of my other notes is when... Uh, when Dot, uh, you know, she was flying her ship and then uh, Megabyte destroys it. And she, you know, she falls down and she lands in his arms. I was so waiting for her to, like, 
uh, reach her uh, head up and uh, kiss Megabyte on the side and, uh, or on the cheek and go, my hero. <laughs> I, it would have been perfect, I swear. Um, and my last note is Cecil seems to think everything is not his function and all that. Uh, you know, he, he's like, I'm a waiter, not a nanny. And then some other stuff and all that. It's just like, come on, dude. Help out. <laughs> and all that. So, yeah, that that's my notes. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, well, I think, like, the games in the show are, like, fans' favorite part. Because imagine this show without games. I think it would suck. Yeah, I, I could see that. You know, it would mostly just be Bob fight and Megabyte fighting pretty much all the time. With a bit of Exodus in the there from time to time. Yeah, and, you know, hack and slash getting splatted all the time. <laughs> but, you know, I think we actually need to uh, start doing a count of this just to, like, see how many times they get splatted. <laughs> At least once per episode. Yeah, sometimes twice, uh, two times and all that. As Even I, three times. <laughs> yeah, three times. I, I, I seem to recall that happening once or twice. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any other final thoughts and such? Did you guys notice Bob's nice blonde pigtails at the beginning? Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I, I made a note on that. <laughs> it, it, it's like, why can't we have, you know, the automatic, uh, you know, um, uh, shower and hairdresser thing in all of our bathrooms? Like, makes all of our lives easier. Because it might glitch and give you blonde pigtails. Or I could see it decapitating us. Yeah. Yeah, that that's definitely a stark possibility. Or you know, burning our hair off. Chef is <laughs> worse. Yes, this is true. Um, and actually, I think that, oh, sorry, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, I think the decapitation is probably worse than the burning the hair off. <laughs> don't know for you, but I like having my head where it is. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but having your hair the way you don't want it's worse than those. <laughs> this is true, and all that. Um. Now, uh, we touched on a couple of things in here and such, but uh, there's a couple of uh, cultural references, as Reboot is famous for, uh, within the show. Uh, so when Bob launches from the carrier at the start of uh, the game, uh, he says, Alpha Wing, clear of deck. Proceed heading 1138, stay frosty. Uh, the 1138 is actually a reference to THX1138 by George Lucas, uh, as well as the Stay Frosty is from uh, the Aliens movie. And then uh, when Bob asks, did I make it in a dazed fashion, this is possibly a reference to Tron when Flynn asks the same question in a similar manner. The final pop culture reference is um, in uh, the number 42 is clearly visible on the deck surface of the uh, the carrier, and it's likely a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, uh, you know, that, that's kind of cool and all that. Uh, did you guys notice all that stuff, or no? Well, actually, Hillary, you did uh, when you mentioned the whole Stay Frosty, but I guess you didn't Well, really... I thought that was a reboot thing. Uh, no, it's actually from Aliens and all that, uh, apparently. So, yeah, I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, does anybody else have any final thoughts? Well, I didn't know about the 1138 to add to other stuff, though. Yeah. Uh, but there's clear reference to Star Wars as well, because, I mean, come on. Yeah, the trench the way, run. The way they fly information, the trench run, I mean, the and planet, how... why an ice planet, you know? They could have done anything else, but no, but. Yeah, right? oh yeah, that's a good point. And uh, <laughs> there's also the fact that, like, when they take off, they all do the whole call-ins, too, you know, like, yeah. Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Alpha 4. I was waiting for somebody to say Red 5 <laughs> and all that. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, it, overall, I'd say for the first episode of the series, it was really well done. Uh, voice acting was spot on. Uh, you know, things were fairly believable and all that. So, yeah. Anybody else have anything to say? Mm, no. I will take that as a no. All right, listeners, uh, we're going to take a break, and you're going to hear another clip from our next episode, and we'll be right back after this. How good to see you, Scuzzy. What have you got for me? 
a delete command, masked as a mask. She'll never know what erased her. Now all I need is some unsuspecting fool to deliver it. Like this poor boy. Delete me, will he? Time to calculate a little surprise for our dear Megabyte. I'll delete him and his delivery boy, too. <laughs> And we're back. So, episode two of season one, Erasing the Clock. When business is slow at Enzo's new delivery service, he secretly accepts a job from Megabyte to de deliver a package to Hexadecimal. Ooh, I wonder what's going to be happening with this one. So, Hillary, uh, why don't you take the floor? Uh, you can uh, start off the discussion. Okay, so this is our first episode with Hexadecimal, and we also meet Scuzzy, which I guess is like her pet. Um, by the way, Hexadecimal has a really sexy walk cycle. Yeah, she does. Um, I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> it's like it, it's in the it, it's the way she moves her legs. I think you know. And her. Hips. Yeah, and her hips too. Yeah, definitely, and all that. Uh, we see that she has to change her mask to change her expression she can't just move her face um we also learn that time works a little differently in this world like people don't say minutes hours days weeks they say like nanoseconds and seconds mm -hmm. um we get to see nulls for the first time we don't yet exactly know what nulls are mm -hmm. um we see our second game bob dot and enter Bob Dot and Enzo enter a racing game. Bob calls it Formula One. Mm -hmm. um, and we also get to see a little bit of Bob liking Dot. Uh, she says, I couldn't let anything happen to you. And Bob, you know, was like, really? But actually, she was just concerned about Enzo's feelings. <laughs> yep. Um, do you have anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay. Alex, how about you? Ha. Huh. Well, I have a few things here. Okay. Um, of course, we get more of Ack and Slash, mm -hmm. and they're funny characters. And if you notice, when they stop the window from Enzo to go in the face of Megabyte, they have these big baseball gloves. It's right in mainframe sluggers on them, which I find really funny. <laughs> oh, wow. I, wow. I can't believe I didn't even catch that. Yeah, that yeah. is pretty funny. All right. Um. Quite, quite funny. And they, both of their gloves say that. So mm -hmm. that's a good one there. Um, of course, with Exa there, everything is better. Uh, yeah. Because Exa is in the, that episode. It makes things very different. <laughs> and we get to see um, that every game is different. Yeah. Uh, which is another good thing. It shows that, that that they won't repeat the same things over and over. Although, um, however, one, uh, like, Slight spoiler alert, uh, there's a couple of characters that do show up uh, in one game, and then they'll show up again in a, uh, later games as well. But we'll we'll get to that uh, later on in our podcast. Yeah, but that's for later. Mm -hmm. Like, really later. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there anything else? No, I don't have anything else on this one. I mean, there is a few things for pop culture, like Jean-Luc. Uh, the reference to Jean-Luc during... Uh, that everything uh, can be thinking of Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek. Actually, uh, funny thing you should mention that. Um, early on in that episode, there's actually a uh, uh, a binome, you know, like the the uh, like the uh, short blocky guys. He he's actually dressed up like uh, Jean-Luc Picard uh, with all like the captain stuff and all that. And I'll be getting to this stuff in the the uh, pop culture references uh, in a minute. But um, or sorry. Yeah, yeah, a minute. Anyways, um, but yeah, uh, that and uh, when uh, Enzo uh, referenced, uh, you know, the name of the person and all that, she was actually he was actually making a reference to that character or to the binome and obviously to Jean Luc Picard, which is uh, kind of funny and all that. Um, but yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry to step over you on that one. Um, and all that. Hey, it's all right. I was done. Oh, you were done. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess that's my first note. <laughs> Um, all right, so my actual first note, Enzo's delivery service, overkill with signs. 
seriously, you can't miss him. <laughs> right at the very beginning of the episode, it's like, dude, you're trying way too hard to be like Bob and Dot, I swear. Um, another uh, thing is uh, Lost Angles. Uh, it's actually, uh, the name is a reference to, obviously, Los Angeles down in California. Uh, you know, that's, they're not to that. Um, another note is Dot is the queen of manipulation and Bob is the king of the one-liners. Seriously, pretty much like every other uh, every other statement he makes, it's a one-liner, and it's amazing. Um, did you guys notice when Enzo broke the fourth wall? Oh, I think he does that multiple times in the show. Well, yeah, I know, but this is the like the uh, this is the first instance of it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, when Bob is flying across the bridge to go into Lost Angles. Uh, Enzo basically looks straight at the camera, like not off to the side, but like straight at the camera. He starts saying, "Like, see, this is what always happens. You know, Bob and Dog get to go off and do all the you know dangerous adventures and you know stuff like that." Uh, I I think I'm actually going to make that the audio grab for uh, this episode as well. But uh, yeah, so like he he breaks the fourth wall with that one, uh, and this is the first instance of that happening. Um, Bob never does it. Yeah, like, okay, yeah, no, true. Bob does definitely do that a couple of times, but... No, but I'm just wondering if he's done it already. Um, I don't actually think so, no. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, the listeners will probably correct us on this if this is uh, right. know, true or not and such. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, did you guys notice the lamp that's in uh, Hexadecimal's lair? You know, that, uh, like, golden yellow one, right? Yeah. You know what that actually looks like? It looks like the yellow lantern from uh, uh, the Green Lantern series. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not a big fan of the DC Universe comics, so I won't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, fair enough. Well, to me, it, it looked a lot like the yellow lantern's, uh, well, lantern <laughs> and all that, so I, I just kind of found that funny. Um, let's see... Uh, I found it funny when Enzo, uh, at the start of the uh, the game, after the, you know they rebooted and uh, they uh, they got into their cars and all that, uh, Enzo like instantly starts going backwards instead of forwards. I'm like, Enzo doesn't know how to drive, so uh, I found it kind of funny. Um, another thing I noticed was uh, when uh, the the mask bomb. Uh, when it explodes, it actually turns into a black hole, pretty much. So they, I, I kind of found that interesting and all that. And my last note is, Hexadecimal really loves her gigantic bombs. Seriously, Lost Angles drops a giant uh, orb bomb down in front of uh, Bob to like block his path. Yet it doesn't explode. She does the same thing in, uh, uh, in Megabyte's Lair. Yet it's basically an A bomb, so I found that one kind of no, funny no, no, and all that. I've got to correct you that on that. Or is it it's a hydro bomb. It's Megabyte that sent a bomb to Exodismal, and then Exodismal returned it with Dagon Slash because she said she's already got one. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I guess that's true, but no, I mean like she, she loves to drop her own like oversized bombs. That's like that's the point I'm making, and such like that. So yeah. So, well, what villain doesn't like bombs? Yeah, she has a point. You have a very good point there, Hillary. Um, okay. All right, so then uh, go over the... Okay, where's my... Crap, what did I do with my phone? Oh, here it is. Sorry, I, I, I used my phone to access uh, the wiki so I can get all the col- uh, pop culture stuff and all that. Um... Well, actually, sorry, I already went over the uh, the pop culture reference for this episode, yeah. It's uh, when Bob asks Enzo what his client's name is, uh, Enzo lies and says Jean-Luc, who appeared earlier in the episode as a binome wearing an altered version of the Starfleet uniform with the captain rank insignia on the right breast, a clear reference to Jean-Luc Picard. Um, So, yeah, that's the pop culture reference for this episode. Um... Do you guys have anything else you want to say, or are you guys good? I'm good. Okay. How about you, Alex? 
Yeah, I'm good. Yep. All right, cool. All right, listeners, uh, you'll hear our next uh, audio clip from the show, and we'll be right back after this. Ah! Shit! Glitch! Auto stone! Ah. What have I done? Poor Dot, erased by her own brother in the prime of her input output. She's too young to end file, too young to quit without saving. It's all my fault. If only I. Had... We'll get her help, Enzo. Don't panic. Doesn't anyone here know how to reverse a magnetic erasure? No, but Fong would, sir. sir? And we're back. All right, so we'll start this discussion off with a brief plot synopsis of the episode. When Bob lets Enzo handle Glitch, he uh, he accidentally, eh, accidentally pardon, uh, partially deletes Dot, and Bob must get her slow food to reverse the effects. Uh-oh, blah, Dot's in trouble. Um, so again, Hillary, uh, why don't you kick off the discussions? Okay, well, in this episode, we meet... Nibbles, for the first time, which is Megabyte's pet, pet in quotation marks, mm -hmm. uh, Nibbles the Null. Uh, we also meet Al and Al's waiter. Uh, we have that joke where Bob calls Dot's waiter Cecil when it's pronounced Cecil. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's some funny jokes in there about how they're in a computer like speak plain DOS instead of plain English. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when they first go into Al's, mm -hmm. we see a couple of sprites. Like... Ah, you stole my... Ah, you stole <laughs> it from me. Uh, ah. Yeah, so there's like an orange lady and a red guy that we... I don't think we ever see them again, and they're really interesting looking. Like, we don't see a lot of sprites in the reboot world. It's usually like binomes. Yeah, and uh, well, I'll get I'll get to that. I'll, I'll expand on that when I uh, go over my notes and all that. Uh, okay. But sorry, continue. Um. Well, all I have left is that they enter a medieval game, and Bob rescues Princess Enzo. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, that was pretty funny and all that. Uh, I've got a couple of notes on that. Um. So, uh, is that everything for you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Alex, how about yourself? Ha! So, let's go. There is quite a lot of interesting things in this one. Mm -hmm. um, more of Megabytes, of course. Um, Megabytes seems to be... It, it, it's, it's shown already that it's going to be the main protagonist of, of the show. Mm -hmm. so we see him a lot, at least for the first few seasons. Um already he's talking about again to go to the supercomputer he wants to make a new portal again so it's kind of where we're heading forward with that it's interesting um are we gonna see the supercomputer someday mm -hmm. that's a good question um in the rest of the episode there's a lot happening at all for example one of the first things that happened is that uh bob is asked to get the tickets to get to, to, to wait for his order and when you press on it it's like a one with a lot of zeros and Bob answer oh 4096 must be the, the lunch one crowd. trash yeah and well 4096 4, sorry I said 496 it's 4096 is actually the decimal of the binary number they show which is, just, which is the one with all the zeros yeah little thing there sure. um and then he gets answered, of course, that uh, they're serving number three, which is really funny. <laughs> um, some other things in there is you mentioned one-liners, and there's a there's a few in there. Um, but one of them is uh, Bob asking why everyone's afraid of seven, and then the final answer. Ah, oh, you eight, stole nine. it, <laughs> dude! You st ah, I hate you. <laughs> well, it's a pretty funny one. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, it's not the first time you hear the joke, but it's there and like really thrown there. Dude, um, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good pun. I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> but you stole it. I hate you. God damn it, guys. You, you keep stealing my notes. Ugh. And then wasn't there like an eight who said that he's been waiting there since he was four? Yes, yeah. as well. I was going to touch on that. It's, 
there's so many little, little mini things in there you can pick up and put aside. But yeah, the, he said that he was he, Bob asked to get the food because he's in a hurry for uh, dots, and then eight just say I'm I've been waiting since I'm four. Yeah, he's number eight. So little yeah. lot of little thing. Uh, other reference in there. Um, medieval time, they fly on dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, might you make makes you think of Dungeons and Dragons? You know, knights, skeletons that rise oh, up. Ah, you stole another point. Oh. And dragons. <laughs> I mean, it's it's my favorite part of the shows when they go in in games that are medieval and they always have like a good good um, aspect on it and they really go into it. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get real Dungeons and Dragons reference a lot later, though. There is yeah. a game in there that's spoiler, by the way, um, <laughs> but that that's really into Dungeons and Dragons, and it's really done that way. It's really nice. Um, yeah, that guess that's it for me. Okay, cool, cool. All right, well, I guess I'll get into some of my notes. You know, the ones that you guys didn't steal <laughs> <laughs> and all that. Uh, well, first off, magnets, the mortal enemy of computers uh you know obviously you know ever i'd say in this show magnets are pretty much like um atomic bombs <laughs> pretty much uh you know because obviously everybody knows when you take a magnet to a computer it will basically destroy it uh you know within just by touching it and all that so um there's that and then um Oh goddamn you, uh, Hillary! You stole the Cecil name freak out from me. Um... Oh, uh, here's a good one. Okay, so last episode, uh, Enzo nearly gets Bob killed when you know he doesn't tell or he doesn't tell him about where the uh, package came from. So he had no idea that it was a bomb, right? In this episode, he just about kills Dot. So I I, I find it funny how within the first three episodes uh enzo just about kills uh two of the uh the main characters and all that uh so i i, I kind of find that funny um bob pulls a classic moment where you know he says everybody don't panic then he he proceeds to immediately start panicking which i kind of find funny um another thing uh Haley, as you mentioned uh we see two sprites in al's uh mm-hmm. al's diner um spoiler alert here uh folks but later in the series uh they say that all the sprites except for dot and Nenzo, who obviously were at the diner at the time uh they were nullified in the lost angles explosion uh which was originally you know the twin city and i i found it interesting that you know here you know um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use our our time frame, not like in the show time frame, but, he, you know, now we have, you know, here years later, uh, two sprites that show up in the diner. It's like, where'd they come from? Yeah, they didn't plan that far ahead, I guess. Yeah, uh, apparently, yeah. because that that's like a gigantic plot hole right there. Not really, because if you think about it, uh, Bob clearly stated on the first episode that he doesn't come from mainframe. Well, yeah, so that but he traveled there, so it's possible for sprites to travel. We don't know how they travel there, but it's possible. I, I, I guess it's just still. Well, then again, you know, uh, if that were if that was the case and all that, Enzo wouldn't be as lonely as he is because you know he's the only child sprite in the whole city. So you know, and he he makes several references to that over the course of the uh, of the uh, the show. And all that. Yeah, but uh, you know, well, I mean, we'll be able to discuss that further. But then, at the at this point in the series, it it has some sense that sprites have been able to go to mainframe. Maybe not childrens, but yeah, I others. guess that's true. Pardon me as a yawn. <laughs> I guess I thought mainframe was a little bit cut off from the rest of the world. I guess. Well, I I, I kind of see it as a. a I, I think they were kind of like uh, implying that it's kind of like a. It's like a backwater system, so it's not really like well known and such. If that makes any sense. Uh, all right. So then, uh, my next note is: Why would uh, Megabyte send Hack and Slash over to Al's diner when 
there are clearly a couple of viral binomes uh, in the uh, in the restaurant already, you know, eating their own food and such like that. So um, I, I, I kind of find that uh, a little interesting and such like that. Um, we get the second hack and slack, uh, or sorry, hack and slash uh, splat of the series uh, when they're uh, chasing Bob uh, oh. down the alley in front of the uh, Al's diner and all that, which I found. Oh, that that's the fun. best. Yeah, it, it, it definitely We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't make it. <laughs> um, and uh, this is a pop culture reference right here, but this was the first uh, use of the term BSNP, which is uh, mainframe using it as a kind of nod and uh, FU to the ABC network sensors, which is the uh, broadcast standards and practices. Um uh, censorship and all that for the show because as many of our listeners hopefully know um, Reboot back when it was uh, first uh, produced and released it was heavily censored at first uh, for example the monoboob uh, which is very famous on uh, Dot and such uh, they you know they didn't want to like have overly sexualized characters however then they went and designed hexadecimal as, yeah uh, as like a um, in like basically lingerie more yeah. or less. Um, People actually wear lingerie over top of like a unitard when they cosplay as her. Yeah, yeah, I was I, I remember seeing that myself and all that. So uh, actually, there was uh, a couple of them at Anime North a few years ago, I think too, which uh, was you know they were actually pretty good, I gotta say. Uh, so yeah, there was that, and uh, just uh, for like. Uh, you know, to clue viewers in and all that, the uh, the use of the BSNP was uh, when uh, Bob was dismounting his blue dragon to go in and go save, you know, what he thought was Dot, but it turned out to be Enzo. Um, we have a, a staple of medieval video games uh, once uh, Bob uses BSNP, and that is Warrior Skeletons. There's always Warrior Skeletons in every medieval game that i've ever played hey alex <laughs> yeah they uh, are skeletons are part of it yeah yeah they that, are yeah and then that's uh, in dragons yeah uh, not dragons not so much uh but you know they they do show up in quite a few games i'll admit that um and then um honestly bob needs to listen more like he was so dense in this episode he wouldn't listen to Dot when she first uh, was trying to tell him to use a vid window to make the order because, you know, she was already partners with Al at the time, right? And when they're up in the tower and Dot is fighting the uh, uh, the user and such like that, you know, she's like, you know, can I get a little help over here? And, you know, Bob's like, oh, wait, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, sure. And you know, he he tries to jump in and give her a hand and all that. It's just like, dude, you are being freaking dense in this episode. Come on. Um, another uh, another thing I noticed uh, noticed was uh, Bob calls Megabyte MB at the end of uh, at right at the end of the episode, and uh, obviously this is referencing the fact that Megabyte's name is a reference to uh, the type of commute. Uh, or sorry. The uh, the type of commu- uh, computer, sorry, I can't English well right now. The uh, type of computer memory um, and such. And then uh, my final note is, hack and slash have another splat off screen at the end of the episode. Uh, basically, you know, when Bob throws the uh, uh, the magnet at Megabyte, he uh, you know starts stumbling backwards and he falls off the cliff, and then. Uh, hack and slash they they jump off and they go after him but uh you know all we hear is a gigantic explosion as you know they hit the ground which i kind of found funny and all that um so yeah that's all my notes uh do you guys have any final thoughts yeah um megabytes refers to a unit of measurement for computers not sorry not the memory yes that's what i was trying to get out (laughs) Yeah, that. just to make sure that out clear. Yeah. Um, and um, if if you listen carefully at the end of the episode, 
Bob asks Dot if she's owning everything into main, in mainframe, and Dot doesn't clear, clear doesn't give a clear answer on that one. Yes, however, she heavily implies that she does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else, Alex? Hey, no. No. Uh, what about you, Hillary? Um, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, at that, uh, we are going to uh, take a short break. You guys are going to hear a couple uh, more uh, clips from the episode, and we'll be right back after this. Magic we are not going to make it. Clean up crew level one. And we're back. So, Hillary, uh, do you have any final thoughts for the episode? Or on these three episodes, I should say? Um, Hack and Slash are funny and Hexadecimal is sexy. <laughs> All right. I, I'm sure the listeners can figure it out by now that, uh, you know, Hex is your favorite uh, character right now. Well, it's true. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Alex? Um, I will agree with everything you already said. Uh, <laughs> that's an easy one. Also, uh, Megabyte, I kind of forgot how I liked him, and now it's coming back. And, I mean, t- t- there's so much around that character, it's going to be awesome for that. So I cannot wait till we talk about the other episodes and get further and further in. Yeah. For me, I, I've always been a fan of Hack and Slash, just because... They're so, you know, they're basically in every single episode, and every single time they're in there, there's always a good amount of comedy with them and all that. Plus, uh, I believe it's Hack is, oh no, sorry, Slash is voiced by one of my all-time favorite uh, actors, and that's uh, Gary Chalk. Uh, I I really hope we can score an interview with him, that would be freaking awesome. Um, But yeah, that's basically all my final thoughts on the episodes. So, um, thank you for joining us here on the Archives of Mainframe. There are several ways for you to contact us and leave feedback for the show. You can email us at aompodcast, that's A-O-M podcast, at outlook.com. You can also like us on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, You can also subscribe to us on YouTube, where all of our episodes are posted, as well as additionally, the, the episodes will be posted on 3gem.ca. Uh, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube, or sorry, not YouTube, iTunes, <laughs> and leave us a review. Um, you can also check out 3gem.ca, where you will find all our episodes, along with a number of our other podcasts, once we start uh, producing them, uh, located. You can also find our sponsors, 3Gems, at 3Gem.ca, where you can find reviews for new and old video games, TV shows, and movies. You can also follow them on Twitter at 3Gem Studios, uh, sorry, 3Gem underscore Studios, and also like them on Facebook. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Archives of Mainframe, and we hope that you'll join us next episode where we will be reviewing three more episodes from Season 1, those being... Episode 4, The Medusa Bug, Episode 5, The Tiff, and Episode 6, In the Belly of the Beast. So, until next time, guys, join me on this. 3, 2, 1, Reboot! Reboot!